Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome to our exclusive coverage here in Puerto Rico, the Cube on the ground for extensive two days of coverage for Blockchain Unbound in Puerto Rico, where all the action is all, the, it's a global conference where investors, entrepreneurs, thought leaders are all coming together to check out the future and set the agenda for blockchain, cryptocurrency, and a decentralized internet. My next guest is John Hardigan, Executive Vice President in Tiva Health. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So Appreciate we were talking uh, yesterday with um, you know, Hashgraph, CTO. You guys are part of that uh, ecosystem. You guys That's are doing some interesting things with health. Take a minute to explain what you guys are working on in your value proposition. Sure, so Intiva Health is a career and credential management platform for physicians and, and all licensed medical professionals. And uh, it streamlines and automates the credential management process that they have to go through every time that they either uh, change positions or take on temporary work. Um, and the Hashgraph integration is allowing us to do instantaneous uh, credential verification. Uh, currently, the, the state of affairs in uh, the granting of privileges at a particular hospital or facility can take literally weeks and, and in some cases months to complete. Uh, it's a very analog process and um, with our integration with Hashgraph, it will, uh, it will take seconds. So I was watching the New York Times today, and I mean, our Wall Street Journal article about you know, verification of work history. This blockchain is certainly a good example of that, but you're now getting it into more health. What is the use case? What's the low hanging fruit that you guys are going after uh, with your solution? And how does that evolve? And how do you see that evolving? Well, so like I mentioned, the, the current verification process for the granting of privileges uh, in a hospital setting, uh, it is, pretty much unchanged since the 1950s. Uh, the internet helps a lot, but what you're talking about is somebody getting a, a credential paper file with 25 or 30 documents and opening the file and picking up the phone and calling and, and, and verifying the reputation and provenance of that particular uh, physician. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's truly a bureaucratic nightmare. It's red tape to the nth degree, and so, uh, that represents thousands and hundreds of thousands of hours and billions and billions of dollars in waste that could be reallocated yeah. to better case, patient care, for example. The big use case we're seeing, education, uh, the workplace, but now healthcare, obviously a perfect storm for innovation. Uh, healthcare is not known for moving fast. Correct. Uh, HIPAA regulations in the past couple decades really put a damper on data sharing from, for privacy reasons. At that time, it seemed like a good call. Has things like HIPAA, uh, has the cloud computing model opened up new avenues for health? Because you know, everyone wants great healthcare, but the data's you know, stuck in some silo database. Yes, absolutely. That's a problem. That's absolutely so what's a problem. your reaction to that? So the approach that we're seeing a lot of organizations take is, is they are attempting to go after the EHRs and the EMRs, the electronic health records for patients. Um, of course, that is something that needs to be uh, fixed. However, uh, the medical space is truly influenced. The main stakeholders are the physicians. They sit on all the committees. They run all the budgets. They make the policy. So it's, it's imperative that we uh, address the physicians and get their buy-in to any kind of significant change. And what you're seeing now is uh, states, as well as other organizations, including the uh, Federal uh, uh, Medical Board, the Federal Association of Medical Boards, as well as the state of Illinois, Wyoming's here, as a matter of fact, representing, and they are all looking at uh, blockchain solutions for this verification problem mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the medical space and, and remaining HIPAA compliant. Talk about security because hospitals and healthcare organizations have been really good targets for ransomware. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we're seeing that mainly because their IT systems have been kind of ancient in some cases, but they're right in the target of, they don't have a lot of IT support. Um, one of the things about blockchain that makes it interesting is immutability. Yes. So is that something that is on the radar and, and how does, I mean, not necessarily ransomware, that's one example of many security uh, issues. Because you got Internet of Things, you have a slew of cloud edge technologies yes. that are emerging yes. that open yes. up uh, a surface area for attacks. 
So what's your thoughts on that? So um, as you mentioned, uh, uh, the traditional models um, have been layered on top of each other over time. It's a patchwork situ situation. And uh, because it's a patchwork situation, th there's vulnerabilities all over mm -hmm. the place in facilities a lot of times. And, and besides that, you know, the, the medical space is probably 10 years behind the times when it comes to technology, maybe five, you know, at a minimum. Um, the model that we're using, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, there's siloed information in these different uh, facilities and, and hospitals, and that's absolutely true. So all of that information, you have facility A, facility B, facility C, they all have information on one particular provider or physician, yeah. but they don't talk to each other, and that information is at different levels of accuracy and timeliness. You mentioned time, time and date stamps. So our model works where the, the information follows the provider, okay? It's all built around the provider themselves, and then the individual facilities can tap into that information, yeah. and also they can influence the information. They can update it. So everybody will then be talking to each other in an anonymous fashion around yeah. the one provider, updating that information and making it the most accurate in the market, and, uh, and, and we get away from the old SaaS model. Before we dive into your solution, I'm going to ask you one more thing around, uh, as you walk into healthcare providers and, and in the healthcare industry, um, you're a different breed. You got blockchain, you got yeah. a different solution. The conversations that they're having is, let's put a data lake out there. Uh, again, centralized data yeah. lake. You know, ISPs are doing that, and, and you know, we know with cybersecurity, anytime you have centralized data resources, it's just an easier target to hack. Correct. So, it's clear that centralized is not going to be the ideal architecture. And this entire movement is based upon the principles of decentralized data. Yes. So, what's it like when you go in there? It must be like, do you have like three heads to them, or like you like a Martian, or like speaking, you know, some sort of foreign language? I mean, what what is it like? Uh, are there people receptive to what you talk about? Talk about some of the experiences you had when you walk in the door and knock on the front door and walk in and talk to them. So, it, it is an interesting situation. Um, when I speak with. CEOs, and when I speak with COOs, they understand that they're vulnerable with, when it comes to their data, and they understand how expensive it is if, for example, if they have a HIPAA breach, it's $10,000 per occurrence. Now, that means if somebody texts patient information to somebody else on a normal phone, that's $10,000 $10, every time that happens, okay? And so, uh, if it's a major data breach and a record of files, if they have you know 50,000 files lost, I mean it, it could be a a, a killing a, a business killing event uh, yeah. under the right circumstances. So I try to educate them. Do about, they look at blockchain as a solution there? Or is, are they scratching their heads, kicking the tires? What's the what's the reaction? They're interested. They don't understand uh, uh, exactly how we can apply blockchain, uh, mm -hmm. and we're trying to educate them as to how that is. We we are capable of doing so. Uh, we're explaining about uh, the vast security improvements uh, by decentralizing the information, uh, and they're receptive. They're they're just reticent yeah. because it's a, they're very um, you know tend to be more conservative. Uh, so as these organizations like the state of Illinois and uh, the Federal Association of Medical Boards, as they start to adopt the hospitals and facilities are starting to look and oh, say, hey, this is a real thing and, and there may be a real application here. Talk about your business, uh, um, and your market you're going after, obviously healthcare, sure. product specifically in the business model. Um, where are you guys? How big are you? Are you funded? Are you doing an ICO? How are you using token economics? Um, how is it working? Give us a status on the company. Sure, so um, we've been in business for approximately two years. Uh, we're a, a funded startup out of Austin, Texas. Uh, we were born actually out of a practice management company, which is an important point because uh, a technology company trying to solve this problem would really struggle because there's a lot of bureaucracy, there's a lot of nuance in how the system operates because it is it is evolved over time. Uh, so that gives us a very significant advantage. We have an operating platform uh, that uh, has been out for uh, a, a little over a year now, and we have thousands and thousands of physicians and other licensed medical professionals that use the platform now. Are they paying customers or are they just users? No, so the, the, the model works as uh, like this. The provide, it's free to the providers, it's also free to the facilities and medical groups, uh, and so we allow that platform to, that utility for them to use. Uh, how we monetize is we have um, other curated goods and services 
for the providers along their career journey. So for example, uh, continuing medical education. Uh, they, all providers are required to take so many units a year, and we have a, uh, a very robust online library of, uh, of uh, CME. And uh, we also uh, have partnerships with uh, medical malpractice organizations. So it's a freemium model, you get them Correct. using the platform. That's right. Where's tokens fit in? Where does the uh, cryptocurrency fit in? Do you have a token, is it utility? Obviously it sounds like a utility token. Let me explain Correct. The, the model. Yeah, so we, we uh, just announced uh, last Friday at, at South by Southwest that we are launching a token, a utility token. Um, and it, it'll go on sale uh, April 19th. And basically uh, how it works is the providers, the physicians will earn tokens by uh, taking actions in the platform that update their data, for example, um, or if they uh, look for a job on our platform, or if they do different tasks in the platform that, um, that uh, improve the veracity of their data. Uh, and then they will be able to use those tokens to purchase uh, continuing medical education courses, uh, travel courses, medical malpractice insurance, a number of different uh, So token and, token and monitor behavior, engage behavior, and then a two-sided marketplace for exactly. clearing house. Exactly. How does the token go up in value? Um, so the more, uh, we, we have multiple partners that are involved. Uh, so the partners will be also purchasing uh, advertising time or, or um, a, it's a sponsorship model. So they'll be able to sponsor within the platform. Yeah. So the more the partners we bring in, the more uh, providers we have, the, the value. So suppliers, people who right. want to reach those guys. So exactly. you get the coins, you see who's doing what. You get, you get a vibe on who's. Exactly. Active and then exactly. that's a that's a signal to potential people who want to buy coins. Yeah, and when we when we announced uh, that we were doing this token, we had multiple partners um, that uh, we have been in business with for the last two years, saying we 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 want in, we want to do this, we want to get involved. Uh, and oh, another another thing that we're doing with the token, uh, we have a an exclusive relationship with the National Osteoporosis Foundation. And um, we uh, put forth to them that we would like to set them up with a crypto wallet so that they can accept donations. Uh, and then we would uh, um, also match those donations up to a certain point that they receive in crypto. So we want to help our organizations, our not-for-profits, uh, by facilitating crypto um, acceptance. So talk about your relationship with Hashgraph. Um, it's two days old, but it's been around for two years. They announced a couple days ago. Um, got good feedback, a lot of developers using it. Um, it's not Ethereum, but that's compatibility with Ethereum. Um, you're betting on that platform. How long did you work with these guys, um, and why the bet on Hashgraph? So, we were looking at blockchain technologies about two years ago, uh, because we realized, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the security uh, issues we have. Uh, we have to be very, um, aware of the type of data that we're holding. So, uh, at the time though, there were significant issues with speed, significant issues with storage, and how it would work by actually putting a credential packet into blockchain. Uh, and the technology, frankly, just wasn't there. Uh, and so we started looking for alternatives, and we, thankfully, we were in Texas, and we happened to run into Hashgraph. Uh, and they explained what they were doing, and we thought this must be too good to be true. It checked off all of our boxes, uh, and we had multiple conversations about how we would actually execute an integration into our current platform uh, with Hashgraph. So uh, we've been in talks with them for, uh, I think, a little over five or six months, yeah. and um, uh, we will actually, it looks like, be the, one of the very first applications uh, on the market uh, yeah. integrating Hashgraph. It's interesting, they don't really have a blockchain-based solution. It's a DAG, a directed acyclic graph model. Um, did that bother you guys? What was, did that, you don't care, it's plumbing? Well, it doesn't so it, matter? So actually, uh, the way that it, it is established, um, it has all of the um, it has all of the benefits of blockchain uh, and, and, and none of the fat and sugar, so to speak. I mean, there, there are a number of things that they do that uh, blockchain you mean, you is You mean unable. performance issues and so security? Performance speed is, is a big one, but also fairness on the date and timestamps. Uh, because with a verification system, you have to prove, you have to be able to prove and show that this date and timestamp is immutable and that it is, has been established in a fair manner. Uh, and, and they have been able to solve that problem. Where, where the blockchain model, um, there is still some question about, uh, you know, if you have some bad actors in there, they can significantly influence the date and time stamps. Um, and um, that was a sig very significant for our model. 
All right, well, congratulations. What's next for the company? What are you guys doing? What's the plan? What's the team like? Well, excited, obviously. Uh, yeah. What's next? So we are, we are going to be announcing some very big partnerships that we've established uh, here um, late spring. Uh, I was hoping to do it here now. However, we've- Come we on, not, break it yeah, out there. I, I would like to, but, uh, but I, I have to be careful. So we, we have some big partnerships we're going to be announcing, and of course, we have the token sale coming up. So there, there'll When's be a big When's that sale push. happening? So it's, it starts April 19th. Uh, and it'll run for about six weeks, and uh, so. What's so, the hard cap and soft cap? Yeah, I, I, we prefer not to talk <laughs> about that, but let's say soft cap about 12 million, and uh, uh, we have we have some interested parties that want to do more, and so we're looking at uh, what our best options are as far as uh, setting the value to the token, and 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 what the partnerships that are going to significantly impact it will be. Well, great job! Congratulations! You know, I love you know you, one of the big concerns in this market is scams versus legit. Um, and you're starting to see clearly that this is a year flight to quality, um, where real businesses are, are tokenizing for yes. real reasons. Yes. To scale, provide value. Uh, you guys are a great example of that. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks for sharing that yeah. information. We're really excited, and it's, a, it's, a, it's very exciting to bring this to the healthcare space, which is, yeah. as we said, conservative and somewhat traditional. And uh, we believe that we will be setting the, the standard uh, moving forward for primary source verification. And if you could just summarize the main problem that you solve. Yeah, it is, it is that uh, analog primary source verification of the credential documents. And um, when, when our platform goes live, we will literally be putting hours of time, there's something like eight hours, back into the provider's lives and back the money of that associated with that back in their pockets, which we hope translates into yeah. better patient care. So verification trust and they save time. Absolutely. You know, it's always a good thing when you can reduce the steps to do something, save time, make it easy. That's a business model of success. Absolutely, and more secure. Yeah. John Hadigan, who's with Intiva, Executive Vice President from Austin, Texas, here in Puerto Rico for theCUBE coverage. Day two of two days of live coverage here in Puerto Rico. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE host. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>